Hi, this is the third and final video of the series Security at GitHub Enterprise. In this one, we're just going to cover enterprise managed users. So enterprise managed users just made it six month anniversary, having become a general available by September, 2021. And what are enterprise managed users? So enterprise managed users is a different enterprise account that boasts centralized user account administration and also tools that customers need to manage their users and code in the cloud. Um, it might be hard to say no to EMUs at first sight. However, working here in the EMEA region, which covers Europe, Middle East, and Africa, many teams and many customers come to solutions engineering team and um, account management team to understand how does that work and is enterprise managed users actually a right fit for us. So to EMUs or not EMUs, which is the short code for enterprise managed users, seems to be like the new GitHub system administrator dilemma uh, today. So let's take a look into two reasons to go for EMUs and to commit to that. And uh, let's take a look and three reasons to not do. In the first video of this series, we went into the mechanics of how SAML works. For organizations that have SAML enforced, users have to log in first against GitHub, eventually perform a 2FA authentication process, and right after this process is completed, users are redirected to the um, identity provider. Users have to log in again against the uh, identity provider, and only then users are going to be provided access to the GitHub organization resources. While in the EMU road, users have access to a true single sign-on experience. This is mainly due as the identity is only existing in your identity provider, which is the single source of truth. Beyond that, by using EMU, you are able to connect your identity provider with GitHub to automate the creation, update, and suspension of GitHub user accounts in a similar fashion that we are probably doing with other uh, software systems that we integrate with. Additionally, you can connect security groups in your IDP to GitHub Teams and allowing you to centralize and streamline both user and group management. Your GitHub Enterprise account becomes a mirror of your identity provider user management. In the second video of this series, we discussed how user provisioning works. If you haven't seen this video, you can check it out here. User provision work by assigning the user to an enterprise application and then provisioning them, which can be done in demand, on demand. User then is going to be invited to join GitHub organization. For enterprise managed users, all these people, all these members and administrators that you see here on the left side, they have to belong to my identity provider in some fashion. So they have to be part of an enterprise application. So how do I configure, how does that work? If I go to my enterprise application emu, which is enterprise managed users fabricant in this case, I'm going to assign a user to this uh, enterprise application by selecting the user. I'm going first to search for that user and select this user. Once I do that, I have the option to select a role for this user, be it enterprise owner or a simple user. I'm going to assign this role and as I already have provision in place, there is a job that is running every certain amount of time that's going to provision this user. So this is automated. But for this demo, I'm doing this manually. I'm doing this on demand. Here it already went through this process. So it went to all the steps. And I'm going to search for that user on my left side, on my GitHub Enterprise emus. And you can see that the user is already there. So as you can see, users are provisioned directly from your identity provider. So instead of sending an invitation for the user to join GitHub, these user accounts belong to your identity provider. They also, they have to conform to a standard. So there is a short code that's added to the user handle. This short code is a four to eight characters that, you that can be chosen once you configure and set up your EMU Enterprise account. For some customers, the possibility of having public repository is a major concern. Mistakes can happen and it can result of accidental exposure of intellectual property uh, that can be a, sometimes very costly. That's why repositories in NMU enterprise accounts can never be public. So adding an additional layer of protection when managing your enterprise code in the cloud.
as you just saw, keeping things private, private also comes with the cost that in new enterprise accounts, you're going to only be able to create private and internal repositories, which means that you'll not be able to have an open source presence as I have like public repositories where users at github.com can contribute to. Members are also not allowed to fork from repositories that are outside of this enterprise account as these members don't really exist on github.com. Other drawback of having enterprise managed users is that we do not have like the concept of outside collaborate, right? All the accounts, they have to be backed by an identity in your, uh, in your identity provider. So outside collaborators GitHub feature is not really allowed in the Moose Wild Garden. Contributions done by developers to repositories in an enterprise managed uh, users environment, they don't map to that well-known green tile contribution graph that developers love so much. So maybe we won't have that much excitement of developers on adopting Moose. Uh, also, users created for a Moose have to conform to a company's identity, as we discussed shortly before, and they don't really exist outside the Moose environment. I just reiterate that. So these users only belong and are created by your identity provider, only belong to that enterprise managed user environment. So as you can see, there are many positive points and many drawbacks. So you have to wait each of them and see what's important for you. So try to think that not only from the system administrator perspective. Of course, it's great that Emus can automate many things and automate your user management and integrate with your identity provider on that. Uh, but also you have to wait what's the um, open source presence that you want to have. There are aspects that touch system administrator, but also the development experience and how developers are going to be uh, using this platform on, the, on a daily to day basis. Now that you're fully aware of these pros and cons, let's go through the full feature overview list, understand what are the limitations, the support, and also let's go through some fre frequented asked questions that we get from customers to see how we can better aid you and you have all the information to aid in your uh, decision-making process. So let's summarize two business needs among other features that make uh, enterprise managed users more appealing for corporate environments. So first is the user provisioning. So this provision process that is made available to users. So some enterprise using GitHub don't want to have their employees create their own user accounts and have them link into a GitHub existing GitHub account. And MUs allow that. Also in the authentication side, enterprise want to have a true single sign-on experience on GitHub and not have this dual process of logging against github.com and afterwards against your identity provider. Taking a quick look and summarizing the feature overview. So we have now some SSO at the enterprise account level, not anymore at the organization account level as the uh, enterprise account standard way. You have the user lifecycle management and the team membership syncing. You have auditing of users activity with the uh, login uh, timestamps of the, the, the users. You have display names that conform with your user's enterprise identity. We still have read access to the open source community. However, no public repositories are allowed. And as of this video uh, has been made, Azure AD and Doct are the support identity providers. So what are actually the support for that? Enterprise managed users is only available for GitHub Enterprise Cloud and only for these two identity providers, which are Azure AD and Okta. Talking about feature limitations, so that's what was summarized a bit before. So no public repositories for organization and a moves actually will be invisible to users outside of your enterprise account. So they're not going to be able to search for it at github.com, not going to be able to find our enterprise there. Also, you are not able to fork repositories outside your enterprise account. You're just going to be able to read those repositories. Users who in any new environment will not be able to public contribute to GitHub which means performing write actions outside of the enterprise account. Also, no outside collaborators, which means the all user accounts must be backed by an identity provider. And three other limitations, which are no GIST, no public GitHub pages, and also no mobile web support. So what are the frequent asked questions that we get for customers regarding uh, emus? 
So the first one is how about a cycle weight? So how do I manage that, that I don't have this option anymore? So one way of managing that is actually to, to leverage uh, features that are available in your identity provider. So for example, in Azure AD, you have uh, uh, the guest accounts that you can use that. So you are still able to have like guest users that are synced to enterprise managed users uh, enterprise account, and they are still going to be able to, to, to use GitHub as they would. The difference is that they are going to be provisioned as members, not really as uh, the outside collaborator basically doesn't exist in the EMU uh, environment. Can EMU user accounts access open source content? Yes, they can access public open source repos, issues, pull requests, and other, other resources on a read-only basis. So this can be done. Uh, they can clone repositories, for example, use the code itself, but they will not be able to take any action that could like publish any content uh, on, that, on, on that repository. So they're not also directly uh, be able to directly contribute to the open source community. So we need we needed like github.com account. Uh, that's mainly because of the isolation model for the EMU enterprise accounts. So are EMUs priced differently? So as of today, as of this video, it's exactly the same thing as it applies for uh, GitHub Enterprise. Uh, so the, it's built exactly the same way. The things that if you'd like to enable EMU in your enterprise account, so how can you do that? So I really encourage you to reach your account manager uh, EMU is not something that you enable, it's a whole new environment or a whole new account that has to be created. And there is a migration process to, to get into it. So to more details, I really encourage to reach your account manager, reach your solutions engineering team, and we are going to be happy to help you. If you still have questions after watching the video, reach your account management team, and we're going to be happy to find the best way to help you.